you all can hear me. We're all more than six feet apart, so happy Wednesday, folks. Smile for Elizabeth. I probably shouldn't be smiling. I should give you a scowl. Huh? Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, good morning. Um, tomorrow marks uh, 31 weeks or 15 and a half incubation cycles since COVID-19 was first identified in Pitt County. If you're counting it by days and the state put the days out, that would be 217 days uh, of COVID. Um, at present, we stand at 5,859 total cases that will update at noontime. Uh, but those are the numbers on the state website this morning. Uh, we have 35 deaths that we have recorded to date. Uh, at this time, our case fatality rate is stable at 0.6%. Across Pitt County, all the testing that's done across Pitt County uh, over the over between September 12th and October 10th, the weeks of September 12th to the week of October 10th, it's estimated there were 20,600 tests done across the county. Uh, the state suggests that as a county, we should be doing 5% of our population every month, uh, which would be about 9,200 individuals. So we are more than doubling the state recommendation on testing in Pitt County, and I think that's a good thing. Um, our percent positivity this morning is 6.2%. Um, not the lowest number we've seen, but but on the low end of, of numbers that we have seen for our percent positivity. Um, when you look at the state website, our data, it's reported two ways. It's reported by date of report and by date of test. If you look at the date of test, because data report sometimes gets confusing, uh, results get clumped, so it makes spikes look bigger on the, the date of uh, report uh, website uh, version. If you look by date of test, um, you'll see that we're really pretty level, and I think that we are on the plateau of the epidemic curve with some, some up and down of that plateau at this point in time. Um, I'd also like to make some remarks about returning to work because this is something we seem to be getting a, a number of calls about. Um, to return to work after COVID infection, an individual should meet the CDC, uh, CDC requirements of recovery, which are to be at least 10 days from onset of symptoms or date of test, to have improvement in those symptoms if this was a symptomatic case, and to have had no fever for at least the last 24 hours of that 10-day period prior to returning to work. In general, a negative COVID test should not be required to return to work as many people continue to test positive for weeks or even months after COVID infection on that PCR test. And in fact, CDC does not recommend a repeat PCR test in a known positive individual for at least 90 days. Um, we'll link to that guidance, that CDC return to work guidance on our website. So please look at that. Um, if you have specific questions, you're welcome to call our hotline, uh, which can be reached through the main health department number at 252-902-2300. And I'm happy to take your question. Um, just to expand on that 90-day uh, guideline uh, for a retest, um, just to make, make certain, the period in which you're shedding and actively able to transmit the virus and far before. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we see this with other infections, too, where once our body has has fought that virus and killed the virus, we continue to shed virus. That virus is likely dead or at least not capable of reproduction uh, or infecting other folks. We see this with influenza and other viruses. Um, so, yeah, this the virus that is shed in those settings is not believed to be infectious. Right. And obviously, um, the big conversation right now is voting, whether you're doing it absentee a lot of people aren't, or in mm -hmm. person uh, during the early voting period. Um, those are the, some of the biggest crowds we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. um, and as the state recommends, you wear masks, you know, socially distance at the polls, but it's not a requirement. So um, what do you have to say to Pitt County voters who are, you know, heading out to the polls and mm -hmm. may, may not want to wear masks? Yeah, I would encourage anybody going out, whether it's to the polls or anywhere in public, to wear their mask to try to stay six feet away from other folks and to make sure that they sanitize their hands after that activity. Uh, I know there's enhanced cleaning at the polls. I haven't voted yet, but plan to do so in the near future. Um, so again, I would encourage everybody to wear their mask, uh, to stay six feet apart and to, uh, to sanitize their hands after that activity. And uh, speaking on that, I know it's early in the early voting period and we've seen a lot of activity so far though. Um, is there anything, uh, any related any 
links to COVID as far as uh, we can see so far in the county? Or? We have not. We're in our second week of early voting now, I think. So um, uh, probably a little early to see that. Um, again, uh, the, the other question would be the Trump rally last week. Have we seen any spikes? And, and it looks like our data is re maintaining level, uh, staying level at this point. So, so I would say, no, we have not seen any bump in cases related to the rally or to early voting at this time. I believe we're on the plateau, Elizabeth. Um, we had, and I wish I could show you the data. Maybe we'll do that, set that up next week so we can walk through that data. If you let's say, if you look at the curve, um, you'll see a curve where it's reported by date of report. And that's the curve that has the rolling seven-day average, that yellow line. And you'll see a couple spikes in there. That, there's a spike where it kind of goes up and down. And that was a data glitch where a, a lab put in 30 some cases that were positive and then the next day they took them out because you can't have negative cases, right? Um, and then you'll see a spike about the beginning of June that was a long-term care facility. And then our, our curve creeps up. That's the Memorial Day to 4th of July timeframe. Uh, on July 13th was when our testing program opened. You'll see there's a step up there and then we ran about you know between 40 and 50 cases a day you'll see the ecu spike and we've come down off that ecu spike and we're mostly back in that sort of that 40 to 50 case a day range we did have a day october 7th where there were 107 cases that was about the time that another testing site opened in town so again the more you test the more you find um but looking at the last couple of days we are we have been in that sort of 40 to 50 s case range per day um, so I think there's, uh, as I said to the commissioners Monday night, I think there's there's moderate community transmission uh, in our in our community, uh, but at a stable level. And um, can you expect this to get any lower than 40 to 50 cases a day? Well, I sure hope so. Um, how long it's going to take to get there is, a, is another question. Uh, again, it comes back to that, to really, to, to the three W's, to wearing your mask, waiting six feet apart, washing your hands. The other thing that is so important and we hear this almost every day, is that somebody went to work and they were sick and they turned out to have COVID. Uh, somebody sent their child to school, the kid was sick, turned out to have COVID. So again, I would encourage people, if you're sick, please stay home. If you think you have COVID, get tested. There's plenty of testing in, in the county here. Um, you know, we do testing two days a week and then other days by appointment for contact investigations. Uh, Vidant has their testing site open from 7, a, 7 in the morning to 7 at night every day, Monday through Friday. ECU physicians, Physicians East, most of the urgent care centers, most of the private practices, both adult and pediatric, are offering testing. Three of the CVSs in town are offering testing. If you think you have COVID, you can get a test. So please get tested and please don't pass it on to other people. So um, with this, um, the test open count, um, is this kind of like, um, yeah, I think if you, if you liken this to a fire, um, we are the fuel for that fire, you know, those of us that have not had COVID yet. Um, so until we can make more of us unburnable uh, by vaccinating the population, I think we're going to continue to see this sort of smoldering fire. And, and that's really what we want so that we don't overload the healthcare system, we don't overload the hospitals. Uh, so there's availability of hospital beds and ventilators and things like that. So we want to keep the transmission at a stable level um, and um, uh, try to prevent cases, obviously. Uh, but we understand that we're going to incur cases. We want to incur them at a rate that doesn't overload our healthcare system. And I think we've done a good job of that. I think we really have flattened the curve. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing that flattened curve with some, with some ups and downs in it, some undulations. I think that was about the day that Viden opened their testing site. So um, we're not sure the exact numbers that came out of that. Uh, we also, uh, the third CVS opened earlier this month, and I'm not sure the exact date on that. So uh, that may have contributed to it as well. Um, but as I said, over the over roughly the past month, there's been in excess of 20,000 tests run in Pitt County, which is, I think, a really good number. Um, so basically right now, all we can do is get tested, not come to work or school, and yeah, that's the other thing. Thank you for bringing that up, Elizabeth. Please, if you haven't gotten your flu shot, please get your flu shot. Um, there are two international studies that have shown that the 
COVID death rate was less in communities with a high degree of flu vaccination. So uh, the flu vaccine, again, is broadly available. Most of the chain pharmacies offer it. Uh, we offer it, uh, private practices, the medical school, Vidant, all these places are offering flu vaccine. So please take the opportunity and get your flu shot. Um, so if that's full of silver, how would it, how would it be with COVID early? There is probably, with vaccination, there's probably some immune priming. And we know that when, when you're exposed to an infection or when you're vaccinated for an infection, our body does produce some nonspecific antibodies initially and that may be part of it. Um, it may also have to do with co-infection. While you can be co-infected with influenza and COVID or some other virus and COVID, the, that means that you're probably pretty unlucky. Most people are generally not unlucky enough to be infected with two things at the same time. Um, but it may be that, well, we're not letting people get sick with the flu and be weakened by the flu or to get flu on the back end of COVID, um, and also potentially the production of some nonspecific antibodies that may, may help impede the COVID infection. Okay. I do want to toss out um, as we get closer to Halloween. Despite all of our recommendations, people are going to gather um, in one way or another. That's just a mm -hmm. pretty solid prediction. But are, is the health department uh, recommending anything for uh, the bars now that they're open to keep from, you know, uh, enticing people to come mm -hmm. out and uh, enjoy their Halloween celebrations? I know that's something big downtown in Greenville. Um, mm hmm are, are, you, are you trying to keep the bars to stay on the straight and narrow during that period? Well, we call, encourage all of our local businesses to adhere to the guidance that's uh, in the governor's order. Um, bars uh, may start out well as, as people consume alcoholic beverages, their judgment sometimes wanes uh, and they may engage in more risky behavior. So, so we would encourage people to uh, enjoy their adult beverages responsibly um, and to be mindful of that social distancing. Good. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week.